Yes, indeed, kings and queens, round it. We say tender, Mwari, myself, Shakara, are uh, here on the 28th of Kwanzaa. Sorry, the 28th of December. <laughs> uh, the third day of Kwanzaa uh, with another Shaka Ra Flexion, Kwanzaa Ra Flexion. Uh, and as said, kings and queens, in the previous videos, one of the things that we do uh, on every day of Kwanzaa is reflect on the principle of the day and its meaning uh, and apply it to uh, our present day circumstances individually and collectively. So I'm taking the opportunity, this Kwanzaa 2016, uh, on the 50th anniversary of Kwanzaa. You know? Kwanzaa's been going for 50 years, started in 1966 in the Black Power era. And um, is uh, really just um, a, a, a fundamental uh, part of the calendar worldwide. I should let people know, you know, that uh, estimated over 40, some say over 50 million uh, African people celebrate Kwanzaa around the world. Yeah, and that's in on every continent, um, you know, what I'm saying, including the continent of Africa. So uh, there's some, you know, it's one thing that you find. Um, no, I say one thing. It's one of the things that you find some level of, you know, cohesion, global synergy in on uh, where these things are concerned, kings and queens. So yeah, today we're doing the reflection on the principle of Ujima. Um, first and foremost, um, in terms of reflecting, I wanna give thanks for being able to start this beautiful monthly spoken word event called Rise of the Griots, you know? And maybe I, I, I'm, I'm gonna do some more promotional stuff in terms of coming for the new year, in terms of what Rise of the Griots is about, the concept and what it's designed to do. But Rise of the Griots, kings and queens is uh, a monthly, uh spoken word event that brings together the art and the movement so what you have is spoken word artists you have poets you have singers you have mcs you have storytellers um, and all manner of different artists kings and queens and then you have activists cultural scientists historians um uh, uh, uh academicians and them kind of things they're experts in certain certain fields of endeavor and that will come and deliver presentations, yeah, to heighten people's knowledge and information and whatever it else is, it, it is like that. So sometimes I'll be presenting, uh, I'm always the host, but sometimes I'll, I'll also be the presenter. Other times, somebody else will be the presenter. And that's the whole point of the event, like that we bring together the different disciplines with the art, um, because the art is very important. People tend to, tend to downplay the art, you know what I'm saying? And sometimes people in the artistic community tend to, t can, fall short of giving the people them that are doing certain works uh, as much uh, recognition and honor as they should so we try to solve that by bringing it together so that's rise of the grits if you want more information in shakaraspeaks.com the next one in january i'm looking forward to it now because we're going to be hailing up and bigging up the name of man like patrice lumumba and looking at the situations that are taking place in the congo yeah, and what I go on in the Congo is very, very important to uh, our world, yeah, if you understand anything about the Congo. So 20th of January is the next Rise of the Griots. I hope people can make it down. Uh, five pi in advance, more on the door. So check out the Shakara Speaks, yeah, the Shakara Speaks.com for more information on the Rise of the Griots. And big up to everyone that's blessed the Rise of the Griots so far, whether you've come as an audience member or you've come as an artist performer. Next one's going to be the first time where I'm not going to be the presenter as well so i look forward to that you don't know yeah um so yeah kings and queens um uh you know we're gonna go into the shakara flexion for today and um in, in in the spirit of kwanzaa it's really um again about just being able to apply these principles 24 7 365 and at the end of the year we just reflect on um you know how we've applied the principles and where we do need to apply them more um, in future. So today, I got a little bit of a fire bun. And I want to say before I go into it that the fire bun is not personal. But I've not I've observed certain things. I'm going to speak on a certain phenomenon that I've observed and witnessed. Yeah. The principle is a jima. Or jima means collective work and responsibility. Yeah. And... It means to build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers problems, our problems, and to solve them together. Yeah, once again, to build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers problems, our problems, and to solve them together. I'm gonna break it down in a second. But before I do that, um, I want to give you another definition that was written by Mama Marimba Annie. Yeah, if you don't know Mama Marimba Annie, get to know. 
uh, but she's as the uh, she's a member of the UNIA ACO, the, the organization of Marcus Garvey, and she is the ambassador for race first sovereign development. All right, and so she has done an interpretation of the Ngozi Saba, yeah, Ngozi Saba seven principles of Kwanzaa. Uh, in that relates specifically to the issue of African sovereignty. Okay, and she says that Ujima collective worker responsibility is African people working together being responsible to and for each other and accepting a common system of accountability once again she says african people working together being responsible to and for each other and accepting a common system of accountability yeah all right so that's now what i'm going to focus on there is the system of accountability but we're going to come back to that let's just deal with the actual um uh, official kwanzaa definition which is to build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers problems our problems and to solve them together yeah this is a very fundament fundamental principle because it, it 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 assumes yeah or it understands that there are certain problems certain issues that exist within our community yeah and that we have to pay particular attention to firstly identifying what those problems are whether they be economic problems social problems in terms of family yeah um and and and, and community development whether they uh be political problems yeah whether they be health you know what i'm saying wherever wherever the problems lie in our community we have to first identify what those problems are and then the only way to solve those problems is to do it collectively yeah have a collective interest and work together in a collective manner to solve those problems to build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers problems our problems and to solve them together that last part there to make our sisters and brothers problems our problems identifies the fact that we have a common interest and a common destiny yeah we have a common heritage and a common destiny all right so i don't i'm not for example free as long as my brothers and sisters are not free there's no individual problems for me to solve outside of the context of the african community and the african world at large yeah this is what the this principle of kwanzaa is emphasizing all right so if i'm a parent and my epitome is doing well at school, going to university and whatever else like that. We're not solving the problem because my individual child is doing those things, but so many other children in my community are falling to the wayside, so to speak, getting caught up in the criminal justice system and whatever else like that. Yeah? Yeah? we see a collective ideal of success not an individual one all right now this is really an african collectivist communal kind of idea kind of philosophy all right when i, I studied philosophy at college and we were taught about descartes and the famous saying i am because we are yeah and there is a saying uh in uh in the kikuyu language umungu ungumungu Unga bantu. Once again, umungu, ungumungu, unga bantu. Simply translates as a person is a person because there are people. You place your individual existence in the context of a collective existence. That means, again, your sisters and brothers' problems are your problems and you solve them together. Yeah, A person is a person because there are people. Your existence only makes sense in the context of the fact that there are other people around you to relate to, to develop you who and whom you help to develop and all these kinds of things all right but the difference is that one speaks to an individualistic mindset yeah my own individual consciousness is really all that matters in terms of my existence all right and the other relates to a collective idea of existence that my existence only makes sense within the context of existence yeah of other people and other things there's a universal existence that brings about my existence and so my existence relates to that universal existence and is inextric and, and is inextricably linked to it yeah again individual collectivist or communalist all right so if i post the status later i want to speak about certain things here now this is this this may not be for everybody but it it, it have a set all right and this is probably if if you're not 
operating within uh, what is considered to be the quote unquote conscious community or you don't interact with it on a daily basis, this particular reflection may not be for you. But listen, still, Bukai, you might get something from it. Like, see if you, see if you fully, fully over is what I'm going to say. Yeah. So, again, the, the people them that call themselves conscious. Yeah. I'm going to talk about the woke, the pan Africanist, the black nationalist, the pro black. The, the conscious community, all right? That's what we're gonna deal with today, yeah? Now, I've noticed over a number of years, to be honest, but this year, I seem to have noticed it more. I don't know if there's an increase um, in, in, in this phenomena, or I'm just noticing it more, but I'm, 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 I'm realizing, <clears throat> I've always realized that it seems to be that negative reinforcement trumps positive reinforcement. Yeah. So if we're talking about an issue in the community, all right, we tend to on social media, I'm talking about social media phenomenon now. Yeah. We tend to say, yeah, this are going in the community, whatever the problem is, and we're not dealing with it. Yeah. Them people, they are fake and whatever else like that. All right. We tend to do the negative reinforcement. And the quickest way to get bare likes is to chat about people that are not dealing with what they're supposed to be dealing with. Yeah. Meanwhile, over here, there's somebody or a group of people trying to actually address that very same problem and nobody ain't writing statuses about them. Nobody is bigging up their work and their endeavours and to say, well, this problem exists. Here is somebody or a group of people trying to solve that problem. Let me profile them. And when people do do that, the likes them on the social media, the shares and whatnot, they're not turn up like when... Um, somebody's fireballing something and slating something. You understand what I'm saying? All right. If we're going to take responsibility for uh, building and maintaining our community together, then we have to really big up the people them and profile the people them that are doing that work and help them and join them and become one of the people that is doing that work. That's more important than writing a Facebook status where you are fireballing certain whatevers for doing certain things. Yeah. I'll give you some, some examples here. If, um, Somebody posts a status here about Afrocentric holes. All right? Because there's a number of Afrocentric hole statuses, yeah, that are criticizing the Oman them for Wagwan, what, what, some of the things that they deal with in the quote unquote conscious community. Or there's a status about whole tip niggas. Apparently, there's some man around here that are faking the funk, so to speak, and going and that say they're about that life when they, all they're looking for is to find themselves in between Uman legs, yeah? And they use their Afrocentric linguistics in order to facilitate that aim. Hotep niggas. If there's a post about Hotep niggas, it's gonna get bare likes and bare shares, yeah? And people come with, yes, talk the things them, and whatever else like that. You understand what I'm saying? All right? Um, and so as a result of that, yeah, another thing that I've seen, particularly this year, and if this is you, because there's some people that do this year that I know, but there's enough people in my time, in my, um, in my news feed and that I don't really know. I just see their, 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 their statuses. But some people I do know. Whether I know you or not, don't take it personal. I'm speaking on a phenomenon that I've observed and I'm commenting on it, yeah? And if it includes you, no disrespect. But may I talk on it because I have to say certain things, yeah? The Pamashanga. So, one thing I've noticed, particularly this year, is the tendency for people to say, well, they've observed certain things in the quote unquote conscious community. And because of that, they say, ah, oh, um, yeah, don't associate me with no conscious community. I'm not about in no conscious community. I'm not part of no group. I'm an individual. Yeah. Some people say I'm an individual. Some people say, um, I'm a, a free spirit. I'm a free, I'm not connected to nothing. I'm not bound by nothing. I'm just a free spirit doing my own thing. Yeah. Some people say, I'm a free thinker. That means nobody don't control my thoughts, yeah? I con I have my own thoughts and they're not connected to none of these conscious groups, organizations and whatever else like that. These are people that the people that say these things, they post these statuses and these statuses seem to get bare likes, bare shares and whatever else like that. And I'm saying like, really, like, I don't understand it in the sense of, like, for me to say, me personally, right? I was born and raised in black nationalist Afrocentricity, yeah? For me to come on Facebook and say, yeah, I'm not part of no conscious community is a joke thing 
<laughs> right? You see what I'm saying? But if I said that, like, what am I really saying? Like, I, people go out and say they've actually said something when they say these things. They actually, go out and say they've, they, they've made a deep point. Yeah? Let's, 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 let's interrogate this thing using the principle of Rajima. Because I'm also noticing that these same people, a lot of people that post these things, when it comes to the conscious community, organizations, some of them are the same people that are going to say, well, if you ask them, we need to solve this problem. What do we need to do to solve this problem? They would say, well, organizations need to come together and black people need to do. Yeah, but you're an individual. You're not a part of that and you don't, you're not accountable to nothing. So what is it that black people need to do that you're not going to be part of because you're an individual? I'm not a part of no conscious community or nothing like that. Yeah, don't associate me with this thing and the what next. It don't make no sense. All right. If black people need to do, then you are black people. You are part of the black people that need to be doing it. Yeah. So why do people think that they've reached some higher level of consciousness when they disassociate themselves from a collective of people that is trying to solve certain problems? Yeah. Now, there are problems in the conscious community, but we don't solve them by disassociating ourselves from the people and the problems and calling ourselves individuals. How is that a solution? Anybody can answer that for me. I'll be very, very interested to know, especially the people that post these statuses about not don't associate me with the conscious community and these kinds of things. I would love to hear from you how your disassociation from the thing, yeah, is uh, a solution. And where are... Because enough people say these things, you know. So I want to know, why is it that all the people that say these things don't come together with their similar mentality and their similar mindset and solve the problems that they say, that they identify in, exist? Yeah? That they're disassociating themselves from. Why don't come together in a collective thing and say, well, boy, we see these problems over here. We, individuals, feel like we've got free thinkers and free spirits, yeah, who are not bound by nothing, yeah? Um... For like, yeah, we talk about we we identify these things and this and these things need to be solved. That so this is what we're gonna try and do to solve them. Why they don't do that? I don't understand. All right, this is a very very serious point, and I find that it's bare ego tripping to build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers problems our problems and to solve them together. There are issues, serious issues in terms of family, yeah, in terms of abuse, in terms of uh uh deficient parenting yeah and when i say deficient i don't mean that as an insult i mean that parenting is something that it's the biggest role that you're ever going to play in your life yet it's the thing that we are the least prepared for yeah it's the thing that we're least prepared for parenting yeah there is nothing that you're going to do in your life that is going to have more implications on the future than parenting yet it's the thing that we're least prepared for and many of the issues that we have in uh, our community relate to parenting and our inability to f develop proper relationships yeah and so things like abuse happen in relationships things like neglect happen in relationships and when individuals go through such abuse or they feel that they've been given the short end of the stick so to speak in relation to somebody that they've that they've dealt with yeah, especially in the conscious community, then they say, well, boy, them people there are not solving the problem. They're not dealing with these things. This, so, this, this and that, what not happened to me, yeah, and them man there or them woman there or this organisation or that organisation is fake because they never assisted in whatever was going on with me personally. But you same individual just said and have been saying, you're not interested in no conscious community. You're not a part of nothing. You're not... um." Uh, attached to nothing, no one can't tell you nothing, you, you're a free thinker, whatever else like that. And I'm saying, yeah, coming back to Mama Marimba's definition, that the only way to solve these problems is to have and develop systems of accountability in the community. If you want the community to solve certain problems, you yourself have to hold yourself accountable to certain systems and values in the community the same way that you want others to be held accountable when they wrong you. You get involved with a woman or a man and they go out with some stupidness and you're saying, well, boy, how can the conscious community be like this though, fam? Yeah. And who's going to take care of this thing? None of them woman there ain't checking this sister when she's guiding on towards man in a certain way. 
None of the man them ain't checking this brother when they're going on towards man, or oh, sorry, towards woman in a certain way. Man them are going around the place, sleeping around the community, um, not taking care of their picnic, and no one ain't taking care of uh, trying to address them about their issues. But the people them that are identifying these things themselves are not holding themselves accountable to nothing. Don't want to be accountable to nothing, but want other people to be accountable to it. It don't make no sense to me, family. Yeah? To build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers' problems our problems and to solve them together. It sounds sexy to come on Facebook, yeah? And talk about how much of a free thinker you are, free spirit and an individual and whatever else like that. It sounds sexy, but it's very problematic because I believe that individualism individualism is one of the biggest problems that plagues us in this society we're taught to think as individuals we're taught to be individuals by people who think with a collective mindset they're collective they're collectivizing they're collectively pursuing their interests and we think that we're going to come and address those issues as individuals dealing with our individual thing and pick and choose when we want other people to take on our problems via social media social media is not a system of accountability hotting up your ex your quote-unquote baby mother baby father brother sister whatever on social media is not a system of accountability that's ego tripping it creates likes strokes ego and a feel good factor. And maybe some people need that. Maybe some people need a reinforcement. That they're not alone in dealing with their issues. I'm not knocking that. But it's not a system of accountability. A system of accountability only exists. When people agree. Certain principles and values. And they also. Discipline themselves. To submit themselves. I guess I'm using the word submit. Yeah, some of us only use the word submit when we're talking about woman in relation to man in relationships. I'm talking about submission in terms of a value system. If we want to solve certain problems, all of us have to submit to a system of accountability whereby we can protect each other. I'm not minding people, for example, that when I get into a relationship, it's me and my woman, yeah? And there's nobody else involved in my thing, yeah? Um, and I lock off the world and nobody, no, none of my woman's friend them or my friend them should have anything to say about my relationship because it's me and my woman, yeah? And all the relationships that I see that operate like that, abuse takes place in the relationship. And nobody's able to check it because it's you and the, the individual that you're involved with, yeah? You understand what I'm saying? All right? No one's able to check it. No one ever knew because you as an individual with your free thinking self a while ago, now you want people to check the man or the woman. Yeah? It makes no sense, kings and queens. So we have to really reinforce this principle of Ojima, collective work and responsibility to make our, to, to build and maintain our community together. We have to have a collective mindset with all our problems. Yeah? And collective mindset means that sometimes you're going to have to collect with other people that why rub you the wrong way it also means that when, in, when you're in that space there are certain destructive behaviors that you can collectively address and deal with so in touching on what i said at the beginning of the video let me big up some people yeah that are doing some work to highlight the positive because people love to go on facebook and twitter and whatever and gun organizations and groups yeah and I'm saying, let's do the opposite. So let me be an example of that. Yeah. I did that in my first video as well on Omoja. So let me do that again. First of all, I'm a member of an organization, the Al Kebulan Revivalist Movement. Um, and we've done many different things over the years. You know what I'm saying? Some of them still exist, some of them don't exist at the minute. And some of them are being revamped, yeah, like Mama Africa Culture Shop. Shout out to everyone that's been asking about Mama Africa Culture Shop um, on 282 High Road Layton. It's closed at the moment. We're refurbishing uh, and we're either going to be um, opening back up in the new year or we're going to be renting out the, the, the shop part um, of the, the building. We own the building, so there's, there's options that we have. But that shop existed for 20 years this month, yeah, 20 years. Yeah, and people like to talk about how the conscious community don't have no businesses and ain't got no peace. All right, but 20 years this month, 
yeah that shop has existed you understand what i'm saying um I want to send a shout. So like that, that's our okay, kind of Mama Africa Culture Shop. We run a Saturday school. All right, we run a Saturday school um, as well. You know what I'm saying? The our the Academy of Excellence. Yeah, check out the website alkebaland.org. A l k e b u l a n dot org. That's gonna be ten years old next year. Yeah, uh, we now run a full time five days a week homeschoolers collective, whereby we're educating the children five days a week. Yeah, which is the basis, the formation for which we're going to be developing the full-time school. And that's called the Ma'a Academy, yeah, um, as well. You see what I'm saying? Over the years, we've done pupil advocacy for people that are um, uh, children that are suffering at the hands of the education system. We've run counselling, family counselling, yeah, for parents, for, for couples, um, you know, and families in general, yeah, which we do less at the moment because of the resources, but the Alkebalan Family Association for years, and, and still does to, 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 to a smaller degree, counsel families in terms of addressing their family issues and whatever else like that. You know what I'm saying? These things need to exist in our community. I want to big up uh, the Manhood Academy for Boys, which is launching in January, aim to be addressing uh, the issues of bringing our boys into manhood. Yeah, I want to big up the Manhood Academy for boys. Very, very important institution. We talk about the fact that there's too many boys um, creating a, a ruckus in the community right about now and no one ain't, ain't dealing with it. Well, you've got institutions. Before Manhood Academy, there was Origin, yeah, that was bringing boys into manhood. Rights of passage programs I'm talking about at the moment, kings and queens. We also speak about the fact that there are not enough men taking care of the boys in the community. Yeah, well, if you was at the Manhood Academy launch, you would have seen a room full of men dedicating to the, themselves, yeah, to bringing young men into manhood, into adulthood. All right. So I want people that talk about the lack of manhood energy, the deficit of man or the, the low quality of men in the community to really profile the Manhood Academy for Boys. Write a status about the Manhood Academy for Boys. And say, give thanks to these men, yeah, for at least trying and attempting to launch something that is going to have a direct impact upon the quality of men that we produce in the future. Better than that, pledge your support to the Manhood Academy for Boys. Yeah, get involved in the thing, volunteer the thing, yeah, and shout out to all the brothers that have initiated that particular initiative right there. Shakara is involved, done already pledged my allegiance to the thing we're not ramping inside you understand what i'm saying all right i want who else am i gonna big up i want to big up same similar group of people that have started the naked truth yeah um and rise of the groups in february is going to feature a presentation from those brothers and sisters the naked truth yeah but attempting to build bridges between our male female relationships as black men and women specifically you understand what i'm saying big up those people yeah big up those people that are doing these works, kings and queens. You know what I'm saying? Yeah? There are enough things that people don't know about, you know. And I'm going to mention certain things. Big up the people, them, that when they see a sister being abused in a relationship, yeah, they take the time to go out and support that sister. Men and women that do that. Yeah? We're not calling names here because some of these are personal issues that don't need a public face. Yeah? But... If we're a serious community, then we don't we do less of the Facebook chatting and gassing and we just take care of our business. That's what I'm saying. Alright? And I find that the individualism is causing problems. Big up the nation of Islam who have run the new mind school, yeah, for 20 years. Yeah, it's going online at the they're going through the process of putting it online at the minute. But I want to big up the nation of Islam. For running a primary school, yeah, for twenty year over twenty years, all right. People don't get ratings for these kinds of things, kings and queens. We're busy chatting about who's not doing what and what needs to be done without actually profiling the people them that are doing it and being a part of the solution ourselves. Big up the nation of Islam. Big up all the Saturday schools. Big up the Africa Bantu Saturday School, Nubia Community Foundation School. Big up Queen Mother Moore Saturday School and all the other Saturday schools that I'm not that I'm missing out. Yeah, and not mentioning for whatever time constraints that we have. Big up the Social Solutions Institute, brother Twilight Bay, and big up Aminoir Consultancy, yeah, who are social enterprises 
developed in our community to address issues like gang intervention. Yeah? And problems like those kings and queens. All right? The disaffected, quote unquote, young men and women in our community. Big up the, the people, them, that are have groups and institutions designed to address these problems. All right? So I'm going to end the video on that note, kings and queens, to say big up those people and to reiterate the idea that we cannot be saying that we're conscious revolutionary and whatever else like that and still at the same time promoting a very individualistic destructive mentality in our community yeah La less of the facebook status is chatting about man ain't a part of nothing man ain't doing nothing um, I'm, man, man ain't part of no conscious community no organ i'm not about that, that no organization because they're not doing anything and the fake people and the whatever else like that big up the real people and be the real people in a collective way there is no individual realism there is no individual realism that is solving any problems in the black community. Yeah, the only way, because we're human beings, we're social creatures, the only way that we're going to solve these problems is to really have a, com a collective ethos, a community ethos and a nationhood ethos. And if you can't think and operate and hail up those who are acting with a community collective and nationhood ethos then don't speak about community communality um uh, uh 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 collectivism and nationhood don't speak about these things don't speak about problem solving if you yourself black people need to solve these problems if you yourself operate like an individual in that context don't want to be accountable to nothing i'm not saying i'm going to say this wisdom of my father yeah who has nothing to teach and I give thanks every day for the man called Brother Lila Bandaka, you know, and the things that he's taught me. Big up my father. Yeah, we're bigging up community, yeah, and building our community to big up my father. Because my father is a real collective community man. Yeah. And people don't even won't know all of the things. And they, they shouldn't necessarily know all the things, but I've seen the, the things that I've seen my father do in terms of reaching out to assist people's families, community um, in, in a very, very selfless way. It's a, it was an example for I and I. So big up my father. But he says that it's dangerous. Yeah. For African people to be in a system called white supremacy that forces us and coerces us to be accountable to it. And yet we have nothing of our own, no African order, no black system of accountability, which we hold ourselves accountable to. Once again, it's dangerous for us, a people who exist in the context of oppression, to be accountable to the system of our oppressors that forces and coerces us to be accountable to it, whilst not being accountable to any African order any black community system to which we are accountable. If that's our situation, all we're doing is reinforcing oppression. So kings and queens, that's why Kwanzaa is so important because it reinforces values and principles like Ojima to build and maintain our community together and to make our sisters and brothers problems, our problems and to solve them together not no individualistic foolishness to make our sisters and brothers problems our problems and to solve them together special invitation al kebul and kwanzaa friday the 30th of december um down there at the water lily banqueting hall big massive banqueting hall you know come down and it's pure free entry yeah so get in the door freeness all right come true it's gonna be very very major mikhail amin is on the bill I'm hosting the thing. Asabi Hawa is on the bill. Uh, we've got Ankh, the legendary Ankh Anum Iyapo on the bill. We've got uh, uh, Tasha Makeda singing uh, up there. You know what I'm saying? If you don't know Tasha Makeda, you have to get to know. So come through the thing. It's going to be very, very major. Yeah. 
And last and fine, well, last but not least, we've got Brother Lee Lebanaka speaking on the principle of near purpose. Uh, and we also have the Soul Force Panthers who resurrected the spirit of the ancestors last year. This year, they're going to be coming to do a, a, a production called The Chief and His Wise Wife. When I end this video, I'm gonna, I gotta go meet the children and rehearse with them because we, 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 we take care of the children and we bring, we, we bring forward, um, you know, we direct their, their, their creative expression in that way, kings and queens. So I want to big up everyone locked in, locked on right now. Uh, thank you for checking out all the Shaka reflections this year, this, this year for Kwanzaa. Um, this is the Ojima one. You know, so we're going in kings and queens, and it's very important that we address these issues. Enough people are faking, like all this individualistic talk, we need to stop it. It's a problem. We need to solve our problem, build and maintain our community together, and make our sisters and brothers' problems our problems and to solve them together. So that means that we cannot be claiming to not be part of the community. We have to affirm our place in the community and be part of the solution in the community. So let's talk about um, don't associate with no conscious community. No, associate yourself with the community and be part of the solution within that community because there is no individual solutions, kings and queens, only collective ones. Blessings. Thank you for all those who have taken part. Watch this video. Like I said before, please share your, your, your viewpoints. Challenge me if you so wish. Tell me I'm chatting rubbish if you want. So it's all good. We'll discuss, we'll debate, we'll reason, we'll dialogue. See you tomorrow, kings and queens, where we, where we will be dealing with the principle of Ujama, cooperative economics. I'm going to enjoy that one, I'm not going to lie. Ujama, cooperative economics. We're going to go in. We're going to talk up the things tomorrow, kings and queens. So blessings. Here, za Kwanza. Happy Kwanza to one and all. Kwanza yona imana here. Have a happy and fruitful Kwanza. I'll see you tomorrow. Rane, we say, tenda mwari.